we had a great quarter. We started off the year last quarter uh, on a position of strength. And really, this is us just executing on the playbook that we laid out at the end of last year. Uh, importantly, we're investing pretty aggressively in building up our supply footprint, adding more lodging options to our customers. Uh, more choice generally delivers uh, more excitement for customers and we're more likely to find what they want. And we saw some, some good strength there. And the important thing is this quarter, we saw healthy room night growth, but we were much more disciplined in the way that we spent our sales and marketing spend. And that delivered better than expected profits on the bottom line. Right, so where are we in terms of the investment spending cycle? What, what inning is it? Well, in terms of the investments, I mean, we got going very early in the year, ramping up our headcount uh, in our priority markets, salespeople essentially to go sign up these new hotels. So a lot of that is already sitting there in the P&L, you can see it. The other big investment we're making this year is in transitioning our compute infrastructure into the cloud environment, and we're going to see that ramp up through the year. We'll spend you know, somewhere a little bit short of $170 million on cloud computing uh, this year, but importantly, we're foregoing capital expenditures, so that's a cash flow accretive piece. So you know, this is an investment year, but, but really we're expecting to deliver uh, balanced profits this year. We raised our guidance to 7 to uh, 12 uh, percent, and we expect to deliver healthy top and bottom line growth for many years to come. Uh, you mentioned discipline in marketing. What, what does that actually mean? How does that show itself? And once you've achieved discipline, do you maintain discipline? <laughs> well, I certainly hope so. Um, you know, this is really just taking a very data-driven approach to the way that we spend our direct marketing spend. You know, a lot of the spend that we make in, uh, in marketing channels is really uh, automated at this point uh, with our transition of our data infrastructure and a lot of our uh, automated bid bidding algorithms up into the cloud environment, we're able to ingest much, much more data and use data science for us to be actually to determine you know, which traffic and which customers are likely going to be able to book with us and which ones are not. And that type of uh, compute capability is relatively new. So um, it's, it's a discipline that we've, we've built. Uh, we can't just stop uh, where we are. We've got to keep getting better. So I hope we keep discipline uh, and we hope this is, a, you know, is, is really a sign of things to come. Mark, what is your data telling you about the HomeAway customer? You, you really accelerated new property additions in the second quarter. You had 33% room night growth, 33% bookings growth in HomeAway. Are you seeing customers choose HomeAway over a hotel? Do you find them searching for both and ultimately choosing HomeAway? You know, we do find that in certain circumstances, and honestly, it just makes sense. You know, if you take, for example, me, I've got a family of four. You know, in the olden days, the choice was really to, you know, really break the bank and try to splurge on a big suite in a hotel, take two rooms that we hope they're side by side with one another and, you know, put the kids in one or us in the other. Uh, and that was really a terrible choice. And now with having alternative accommodations online and particularly the home away accommodation, which is generally a two bedroom plus accommodation, the option is real now for us to use our apps and look online and actually instead of staying separate, really stay together. Mark, foreign exchange, strong dollar and trade tensions. How do you see those issues impacting the outlook and, and are they already dampening the guidance a bit? Well, versus where we were at the beginning of the year, you know, absolutely foreign exchange uh, is dampening uh, the guidance a bit. You know, we did have a tailwind and that tailwind is, is dampening. Uh, generally what we see with foreign exchange movements though is that even though our reported results move up and down, people still travel. Uh, it just changes the patterns uh, of people travel. So, you know, we, we really view this as just part of our business. Uh, we expect that as the U.S. dollar strengthens and weakens, uh, U.S. travelers will stay closer to home or take more trips to Europe. Uh, the great news is for us, we're a global business. So we're here to be the world's travel platform and help people go wherever they want to go.